All right, let's talk about the 10 or so words that you might have thought about. I asked you to tell me any words that come to your mind when you think of weather. Let's say you have a baseball game or a softball game or a football or a soccer game tonight, and you are thinking about the weather. What are the things you're thinking about? Okay, so I think, did most of you include temperature? So whether it's hot or it's cold. Oh, I spelled it. Oh, well. <laughs> oh, that's embarrassing. All right, let's try that again. All right. What else do you think about if you think about weather? Okay, so precipitation. So whether it's going to rain or it's going to snow or sleet or not do any of those. What else do you think about? Humidity. So in the summer specifically, I would assume you might think of the humidity, whether it's really humid out or nice and dry. Lake effect is a good word for around here. So there is lake effect rain and lake effect snow that definitely impacts us around here. Anybody think of any more? Huh? Storming? Is that what you said? Yep. So we're getting a storm. What else? Cloud cover. So whether it's cloudy or clear. I saw some pretty long lists. What else you got? Nobody got anything else? Okay, we hear warm and cold fronts. What else? Winds, yeah, that was, that's probably another one that I was thinking of. Did anybody have anything different? It's not up there yet. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're gonna watch the weather report. And I would, and today's weather, what I would like you to do is if you hear any, if you hear the meteorologist talking about any other words that are weather related. Yeah. Gotta make sure there's propane. Yeah. And the, you Nothing know. worse than when you go to cook something and, and it doesn't actually it. work. We've been in that yeah. boat. Yeah. You know, there, there are people in this area, they they grill stuff even during the middle of a snowstorm. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Yep. It's you know, true. I've seen it happen. In fact, I've been one of them. <laughs> so, uh, and today actually is going to be a good day for uh, firing up that uh, barbecue and uh, maybe tomorrow too, actually. Uh, there's just a slight chance of a sprinkle during the day tomorrow, but today's going to be dry. 47 degrees. That's going to be our high tip out there this afternoon a little bit above that average of 43 we're heading down to 33 tonight and the sunset time almost 7 30 we're getting there 7 28 tonight here's a look at the airports across the area to kick off uh, the day some clouds being observed in the latest observation uh, in from the falls, but that's going to be updated in five minutes. It may actually reflect uh, partly cloudy skies, I think, in the next update. Uh, partly cloudy at the Buffalo Airport, 40 degrees, 39 at the falls, and we drop off to some low to mid-30s down here toward the southern tier. And the wind chill really is not going to be a huge factor today because the winds, number one, are going to be lighter, and also it's going to be milder out there with readings well into the 40s, even here in the Buffalo Metro, and maybe even some 50s toward the Pennsylvania line. Here Here's the readings up in the North Towns as we kick it off. 40 degrees up on the island right now. Good morning up there. Uh, town of Tonawanda, 37 at the water treatment plant, 38 at the lighthouse. We have Clarence Center checking in with a 37, 39 at Alden, 40 at Lancaster in the eastern burbs. As we get you down to the South Towns, a lot of mid 30s prevailing in this direction. Villages of Hamburg, Orchard Park, up the West Seneca, all at 35 degrees, and then dropping off a little bit closer to freezing across the very deeper interior sections of Erie County. We're down to freezing at Springville right right now and mid-30s along the Erie Lakeshore down there uh, toward the southwest. Yeah. Here's a look at your morning commute, and uh, maybe a bit more clouds up to the north, but nothing coming down from them. And I think there may actually be some breaks of sun as well. It's going to be uh, even a bit sunnier as you travel southward on the 219, 16, and also on the throughway westbound along the Lakeshore this morning and Southern Tier Expressway. Uh, a little bit more clouds in the mix, especially on the throughway eastbound from Buffalo, Batavia to Rochester. As we uh, check in on your hour-by-hour -hour forecast, 
forecast for today. Actually, at 8 o'clock this morning, the computer really scouring out the clouds quite a bit. Uh, and then at times, there will be some clouds flirting with the area, particularly north of Buffalo during the day. But again, dry, uh, sunnier skies down to the south. As we get you into tonight, partly cloudy skies. Uh, tomorrow, maybe even a little bit of sun for a while during the morning hours before the clouds thicken during the afternoon in advance of the next upcoming storm system. I can't rule out a sprinkle during the day tomorrow, but I think for the most part, it's going to turn out to be a pretty dry day. So, see, you can fire up that barbecue. I'll be over. Uh, here's a look at uh, the period getting into uh, Thursday. Actually, just after midnight, we start to get into some rain showers here. Looks like uh, now this is a little bit of a change from yesterday. It looked like we had uh, quite a dose of rain over the area for the morning commute on Thursday, and we will have some rain, but it looks to be on the lighter side. It looks like the intensity of that rain kind of picks up getting into Thursday afternoon now with some heavier downpours impacting the area. At that point, that winds down working through Thursday night and maybe some breaks in the clouds. And on Friday, yeah, there's going to be a lot of clouds around here, but there may actually be some breaks too. It looks like it's going to be like high clouds, so if they're thin enough, we'll see some filtered sun. Rainfall amounts out of this upcoming storm anywhere from half an inch upwards to around an inch in the far western county is anywhere from three to four tenths, uh, maybe five tenths of an inch off to the east. So milder today and becoming partly sunny. It's going to be sunnier well to the south. 46, 47 degrees around the metro today, 56 degrees near the Pennsylvania line, and that breeze a little bit lighter, southwest 8 to 16. For tonight, 30 to 38, partly to mostly cloudy. Light southerly breeze shifts to east. Tomorrow, 48 to 55, partial morning sun, then clouds thicken up, and we could catch maybe a, a sprinkle by late later in the day, but nothing really huge. It's as we get into Thursday that rain is going to be more likely light at first, but then it becomes heavier in the afternoon. Maybe some downpours out of that 53 degrees. Uh, there actually uh, are going to be some clouds around here on Friday, but maybe some breaks and another drippy day shaping up for Saturday and perhaps maybe another one on Monday. In between there are a few morning snow flurries, especially across the hills on Sunday. Chris. Anybody hear any other words that we didn't already cover? To be honest, I do not either. Um, the one word that I thought was missing. Oh, oh. The thing that's different about a verb. One word that I normally hear in a weather report, but they did not include in this one, would have been. Pressure. Pressure is you. Pressure is usually talked about on weather reports as well. Keep that with. Uh, maybe attach it to the front of your packet. Um, we'll go through it. See if we cover all of it this chapter. Um, so we're going to start right off on ch uh, chapter seven, part two. Notice this one starts at page twenty three. So this is just a continuation of the last chapter we were working on. So everything we talked about last chapter with the angle of insulation, the duration of insulation, um, how much cloud cover we have, the atmosphere stuff is still relevant for this part of the chapter. So what you're gonna notice is at the top here, we have three major weather variables, temperature, air pressure, and relative humidity. We're gonna be skipping around this packet a little bit uh, just to make sure that it flows the best that I can. So we're gonna start right off with temperature. Do you guys know what temperature actually is? No. Okay, so most of you probably went right with, well, how warm or cold it is. And you're not wrong, but there's a little bit more scientific definition and this is from your eighth grade year so this is something that might may or may not sound familiar since you guys had that really crazy eighth grade year so temperature is officially the measure of the average kinetic energy do you guys remember what kinetic energy was okay it's the energy of motion so Average kinetic energy means that temperature is measuring how fast those molecules are moving.
Um, what instrument do we use to measure temperature? Yeah, a thermometer. I did not give you an official slide. I guess I put the word up there, but I didn't think we really needed. Yet, yeah, I didn't think we really needed to talk about it. A thermometer. I have multiple thermometers around the room. This one has always been up here. Um, you have that one. I don't know if you guys were aware of the little mini weather station I have right here. Uh, right outside that window, between the window and the screen, is the sensor that sends information there. And I also got this little guy that's um, talking about the temperature here uh, as well. What do we measure temperature in? Celsius? Or what'd you say? Well, degrees Celsius. Celsius, Fahrenheit, and Kelvin. If you guys were in lab, you might have picked up on that. There are three scales. I'm pretty sure you are only really familiar with Fahrenheit and Celsius. Um, Kelvin is more like the unit of measurement that a scientist would use. It's typically used to talk about really cold things or really hot things. Uh, notice I did not put a degree symbol in front of Kelvin because technically there is not one. Would you be marked wrong if you did put one? No, you would not. Nor would you be marked wrong if you put, didn't put one for degrees Celsius or Fahrenheit. As always, make sure that you read all the words and check out all those symbols in case they're talking about Fahrenheit. Make sure you're reading in Fahrenheit. Uh, on a weather map, so they were showing some weather maps there on the news report. It was this colorful map. Um, we've done those maps before. Does anybody remember what those maps that show all the places of equalness are? We did them at the beginning of the year. Connect the dots for slightly older kids. Who remembers what those are really called? Guys, we got a final coming up, a region's final. And um, did you know we only have now after today today we have 52 classes left tomorrow so if you don't count today we have 51 classes left mm. got a reason to come up. Mm. remember what those maps are called they connect areas of equalness mm. those are called iso maps oh. we did specifically contour maps a lot lines that connect areas of equal elevation but the weather reports love those maps and on a weather report, those that connect areas of equal temperature are called isotherms. So they're shown on another weather map with isotherms. These are lines that connect areas of equal temperature. So that's chapter two, the connect the dots for slightly older kids will be making a comeback this chapter and we'll be using them a lot. In fact, we have a really big map that we draw in lab. And finally, does anyone know how to convert between Celsius and Fahrenheit? Anybody know? There's like a math problem. It's really long and complicated. Or how would you guys, if, they, if I said it was uh, 22 degrees Celsius, what would you do to figure out the Fahrenheit temperature? You'd look it up. Right? Yeah. Um, most of us, I, in fact, I would ask um, Siri or Alexa because that's even easier. Um, and since you can't do that on the regions, what is the best alternative then? The match formula. So, no, no. Math is never the answer, guys. Math is never the answer. What would we do if you could simply Google it? Your reference table. Everybody grab your reference table, open it on up to page 13. It's super easy. It is. We are welcoming the page. We haven't done yet. Um, 
here I just have a regular thermometer. Uh, we have a Celsius side, and while this side's not labeled, it is the Fahrenheit side. I'm not sure why it's not labeled. Um, no, this is not Fahrenheit. Okay, well, that was useless. Sorry, I just assumed it would have been. But this one, well, it's not going to fit under here. We can still get this. <laughs> okay, okay. So here is my thermometer. The big numbers are measured in degrees, where is that? Degrees Fahrenheit. And under that red thing right there, you can see that the inside numbers are degrees Celsius. So right now, it looks like we're, what would you say we are for the Fahrenheit, the big numbers? No idea. What do you mean you have no idea? There's 60. So 60 is there. Uh, oh, sorry, 80s here. Hard to see. I guess you're right. All right, I'll get, I'll give you that. It's kind of hard to read. So it looks like 60s actually there and 80s there. What would we be on? I'd say 70, maybe a teeny tiny bit past the 70 mark. Um, I don't, I didn't read that, but thank you for your added adjective. Um, how would we read this in Celsius then? Uh, probably 20. Probably 20. 20 is definitely over here a little bit. Oh, it's actually 22. Okay, 21, 22, maybe a little into the 23s. So you guys are able to read both Celsius and Fahrenheit on a thermometer? That's the same thing you're going to find on page 13 of your reference table. So again, if you haven't already gotten that out, grab page 13. And you'll see right here, basically a little... So a uh, little thermometer scale. Down the center, you'll see the Celsius scale. Down the left, the Fahrenheit, and then the right, the Kelvin. The biggest issue with this is going to be realizing what the lines are counting by. So why don't you take a look at the Celsius group, or the Celsius inside labels. I don't know what I'm getting at here. Look at the Celsius scale. What are those lines going up by? They label every 10. But what are the little lines going up by then? Yeah, those are going up by ones. I do label that just so I don't have to think about it ever again. What are the Fahrenheit going up by? That side's going up by two. So it is important to just uh, notice that when you're reading this. Uh, but again, if we went to 70 Fahrenheit, uh, which is, here's 60, there's 80. 70 Fahrenheit, just like you guys were saying, is uh, just under 22 degrees Celsius. So to read them, you just find what you're looking for on one side and look to see what it is on the other one. Um, so let's go ahead and do uh, these, this little chart right here. Uh, if you notice that boiling, freezing, and room temperature are on the reference table, they're labeled for you so that you don't have to memorize what the boiling points are or the freezing point. The one that's not on there is body temperature. And I do figure as good um, humans, you should probably know what your body temperature is. Anybody know what it is in Fahrenheit? Not 96, 98.6. So go ahead and see if you can use the chart to figure those out. Logan, you're supposed to be looking right now. Let me know if you need some help using this chart. Yeah, you definitely need it. I know it would be easier to Google this, but we won't have Google on the region, so we do have to get comfortable using our reference table. Yeah, I'm having a risk. Okay. 
Anybody struggling with any of them? Well, so the whole ninety eight point six. Obviously, you're gonna have a hard time finding the point six on the reference table. You could use 99 or 98 for that. It doesn't, well, it's Fahrenheit, so 99 is probably not perfectly on there. It goes up by two. So I know these lines are really small and really close together. The reasons will give you a little bit of wiggle room. Um, often the choices will, the answers, the problems like this would be multiple choice and only one answer would be super close. The other answers would be good wrong answers, but they are not expecting you to be right on. You could probably be off by one or two degrees depending on the problem. So on this, did we find where water boils in Fahrenheit? So again, that's labeled uh, right here, water boils. And what do you want to estimate that as? What line is that dotted line going across? That is 212. So notice the 210 line would be that bigger line where one line above that. And since the Fahrenheit goes by twos, that's 212. What was it in Celsius? Uh, not 101, right on the 100. Now, Kelvin, I forgot to talk about that side. What do those lines go up by? Those ones also go up by one. And as you can see, the 370 is labeled. How, what did you end up on if you're going up by ones for th 373? How about water freezes at Fahrenheit? Now, a lot of you probably knew this one off the top of your head. That's 32. And in Celsius, zero. See how much easier Celsius is? How about Kelvin? 273. So you'll notice that Kelvin and Celsius, they kind of just match up to each other. That would be an easy conversion. No math, real, well, a little bit of math if you consider adding 200 and 73 to whatever your answer was for Celsius um, math, but it is math, I guess. Never mind, I'll stop talking. Um, body temperature, we had 99 or 98 degrees, which is right below it. So it's one line below 100 is 98. What did you estimate that as in Celsius? 30, that's 36. Okay. So I see, where are we? Here's the 99. If we go over, that's 35. I'd say 36 or 37 would be it. And again, for um, Kelvin, read that over. What'd you think? Um, I, I think I had 310 or 311. If you wanted to use a straight edge, uh, yeah, it looks like it's right on 310 with my straight edge. It does help to use a straight edge. Um, again, it depends on the problem, uh, but they would give you one, maybe two, but I doubt two, probably one degree. And room temperature. Now, this is not the temperature of this room. It's not the temperature at, that you keep your house at. Just to kind of give a good baseline, they labeled room temperature. And what did they label room temperature at with not 67? Remember, those go up by twos on that side. That's 68 degrees Fahrenheit. 
And what are, again, if you wanted to use a straight edge, it might help you. What is it in Celsius? Right on 20, I think. And what is that in Kelvin? 293. All right. Easy enough to convert back and forth? Perfect. All right, we're going to skip around because I want to make sure when you get to lab starting tomorrow, you are not completely lost at what Mr. Winters or Mr. Mega or I are going to be talking about. So we're going to skip ahead to page 23 and talk about humidity. Thirty-three. So what do you guys know about humidity? It was one of the words you brought up today. So what do you... So we often associate humidity with warmth. It's very hard to cool off. Okay, it's hard to cool off if it's humid. That's a good way of putting it. Why is this not moving? There we go. There's too much like... All right, there we go. So humidity has to do with water vapor. You guys are right on there. So let's get the official definition. It is officially a ratio between the amount of moisture in the atmosphere compared to the amount of moisture the atmosphere could hold. I like to compare this to your grades. Do you guys know how I determined your grade on your test yesterday, for example? Like, where does a 96 uh, come from? Where does a 92 or a 65 come from? Where do I get those grades? Okay, but how do I figure that out? Anybody know how to figure out your grade? How any teacher has ever figured out your grade? Mm -hmm. No idea. Would it help if I told you there were 26 questions on the test yesterday? Mm -hmm. Right. When you take the amount you got correct, oh, and let's say it was 24 correct mm -hmm. over the amount of questions on the test, or really it's saying the amount you could have gotten correct. So I take the points you got, the points you earned, 24, divide them by 26. And does anybody know the last step? Times 100. Times 100 to get your grade on the test. And I believe, without doing this, I think when people got two wrong, they got a 92, I think. I could be wrong. That's exactly how relative humidity is figured out. It's taking the amount of water that's in the air, compared to how much the air could hold and multiplying it by a, a hundred. So if the air could hold 26 units of water, but it's only holding 24 units of water, that means we have 92% humidity. So it's also shown just like your grade, it's measured in percent. Does anybody know what it's called when the air is holding as much water as it can? <clears throat> Not really a science word. Anybody? Do what's different? What'd you say? Wait, okay, so that's another way of saying that, that when is the water at max capacity? How about this? If I gave you a sponge and it was all filled up with water, what are some what are some words that you might use to describe that sponge when it's all filled up with water? Soaked. Not the word I'm looking for, but you're not wrong. It's called saturated. You guys good with that word? You, you know what saturated means? If a sponge is saturated. So when air is fill, holding as much water vapor as it can, it's, we say it's saturated. 
And when the air is saturated, that means we have 100% relative humidity. And then the kicker, why we're so uncomfortable when it's hot out and humid out is because the warmer the temperature, the more it moisture the air can hold. What do air molecules do when they're warm? They spread out. When those air molecules spread out, that means there's more room for water. Warm air can hold more moisture than cold air. That is a very, very important point that you're going to need to remember for this whole chapter, is that warm air can hold more water than cold air. What happens, guys, if the air is 100% saturated? What's going to happen if you try to add more moisture to that air? Now, it can't get more than 100%. What happens to a sponge that's already saturated and you try to add more water to it? It, 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 it? What do you say? It starts raining. Yeah, a sponge doesn't rain, but a sponge that you try to add more water to is not going to be able to hold more water, so it's going to start dripping out. And that's what happens with air is when it's 100% filled up, that means it's about to rain. So between temperature and relative humidity, as temperature increases, so we keep the amount of water vapor the same. Let's say I have 50 particles of water. If the water can only hold 50 and it's 100% filled, and then I raise the temperature. When you raise the temperature, it means you can hold more water. So as the temperature, as the temperature goes up and the amount of water vapor stays the same, the humidity will actually decrease. So when it's cold out, like in the morning, the water vapor is a hundred or the relative humidity is a hundred percent. But then as the day starts to warm up, the humidity actually decreases. There are two instruments that we use to measure humidity. One is called a hygrometer, and the other is called a sling cytometer. So label both of those. You will be responsible for knowing both of those instruments. We will be using sling cytometers in class and lab, big time in lab. So I have a sling psychometer here. What does this look like? The way you mm -hmm. I don't think it looks like a compass. You do? What are these things? What'd you say? They're thermometers. In fact, there's two thermometers. What's weird about this thermometer? It's wearing a sock. This thermometer is wearing a, slot, a sock. And it's called a sling psychometer because you sling it. This is what we're going to be doing with these in lab starting tomorrow. Um, who's got first period lab tomorrow? None of you? Okay, perfect. Um, so we're going to get to how to use these tomorrow again in class. Um, you guys have homework. It is the box on the front page that we did not do. So let me show you what I mean. So I already did one of these four. I already did one of them for you. I did the first one. So for this second one, I give you degrees Celsius. I need you to go turn it into degrees Kelvin and degrees um, Fahrenheit. Yes, of course you could Google them and you'd get a perfect 100 on tomorrow's test or tomorrow's homework assignment, I mean. But I do need to make sure you're able to do these uh, conversions using the reference table chart. So there's only like 10 of them. So go ahead and use your chart on page 13 like we just learned about.